Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Do you realize or do you know what the most commonly prescribed medication in the United States is? Hmm. Do you I know, have to I, take a guess? Yeah, you do, but I, I, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> okay. I would have said statins or some sort of uh, antidepressant or anti-anxiety medication. That's what it used to be. Valium, I think, was uh, whatever before statins came. Okay, you, are you going to guess? I wouldn't even hazard a guess, no. Well, if you did guess thyroid medication, particularly, specifically levothyroxine, you would be correct. I should have guessed that and one. Of course you should have. Levothyroxine is used to treat hypothyroidism. Your own thyroid gland doesn't produce enough thyroid hormone. 21 and a half million Americans take levothyroxine. Including me. Do you? Do I do I get to talk about every <laughs> every well, topic? We're we going to find about. out today if you really <laughs> yes, need to be taking it. <laughs> I know. Well, a recent study published in the New England Journal of Medicine suggests that not all of these people, Tom, mm. um, especially older adults, are really benefiting from taking it. Here to discuss thyroid medication is Mayo Clinic endocrinologist Dr. Juan Brito. Welcome to the program. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Brito. Oh, thank you for having me. Dr. Brito, good to have you. So the recent study suggested that not everyone who is taking thyroid replacement needs to be taken. Do you agree with that? Yes, I completely agree with that. But uh, before we, we move to the, the reason why they found that, it is important to clarify that there are two kinds of hypothyroidism. Oh. So the first class is when your thyroid levels are actually low. And in that case, giving the medicine makes absolutely sense. You're just replacing what is needed. Your thyroid hormone level is low. Exactly. So the thyroid is not producing enough. It's producing 80, 60, 50, 40 percent. So the physician will find that something is um, abnormal in your blood test and will give you the medicine just to normalize the values. So that is completely... Pretty clear cut. Pretty clear cut. The second, which is more frequently found, uh, very common, is when your thyroid levels are actually normal in your blood. But the signal from the brain is high, suggesting that your brain is sending a signal to the thyroid just to tell the thyroid to work more. That we call subclinical hypothyroidism. Subclinical, yeah. So the prevalence of the common and more frequent hypothyroidism is about 0.2% of the population. So just a few number of people have the, the real hypothyroidism. But a subclinical one in which the levels are normal but the signal coming from the brain is high, is actually in 12% of people. So that's a large, large number. So what you're saying is that those people, just because the signal is high, despite the fact that the hormone level is normal, they're being treated. Yes, the majority of those people get treated. So what the study was analyzing is in, in elderly people who have this subclinical hypothyroidism, what was the benefit of giving them thyroid hormone? And they analyzed the data by one year, and they found that there's not benefit from the outcomes that they were measuring. Wait a second. Why give that? Why do that anyway? No matter if they're elderly or not, if their thyroid level is is where it should normal. be, mm -hmm. is normal. Why would you give a person thyroid medication anyway, no matter what their age? That's a very good question. And and. There are, f there are some triggers of treatment. So there are some reasons why clinicians are treating these people. One of those is that the experts have different opinions about it. So different guidelines about the treatment for hypothyroidism might recommend treatment, and some others might not recommend any treatment. So that is one. So clinicians get these mixed signals about when to treat and how to treat. The second one is that uh, the symptoms of hypothyroidism the one that really the levels are low, are very vague. So they are mm. fatigue, hair loss, dry skin, weight gain. So that they usually happen in normal people with no conditions. As they get older. As they get older. Mm -hmm. Or even, yeah. you know, young people, but yes. Yeah. Uh, so imagine that you have the combination of someone complaining of this and someone checking the thyroid just to make sure that everything is normal. Now you find something abnormal in the test and the patient having the symptoms. So they tend to come together as, oh, maybe we should treat as a way to see how ha what happens. But what ended up happening is that these patients get the treatment. Sometimes they don't feel any benefit. But then they never are asked to stop the medicine. Oh. So they continue this medicine forever. And becomes one of the medicines that patients just get in the list. Right. And they are difficult to actually step down. 
Well, that's what once I've always thought. Once you're on leave with Iraqs and you're on it for the rest of your life. Exactly. So that is the, the common belief. And it's, it's, not actually, it's not actually true. You can actually sometimes challenge that by stopping the medicine and see what happens with the levels. Is there a side effect or is there is levothyroxine bad? Oh, well, yes. Uh, if, if the dose is, is all right, it should not have any side effects. The typical side effects. But the medicine itself has to be taken in a specific situation. So it has to be taken in empty stomach 45 minutes before breakfast every day of your life. You have to get it refilled. So there are other things that we don't always consider. But there's something that takes time to do it. On top of everything, if the doctor doesn't get it right, or the patient is getting it, uh, it t taking the medicine in the wrong way, they can actually get the other treatment effects. So they can get the, what we call hyperthyroid symptoms, which are hyper, the hyper too hyper, much, exactly too okay. much. So they start feeling uh, they're completely opposite: shaky, uh, palpitations, yeah. they weight loss, symptoms that you know are really really uh, difficult to handle. So there is one study, for instance, they f they, the study found that almost 50% of elderly people initiated on levothyroxine therapy, at one point in therapy, they were overtreated. So 50%. And the majority of these people, they don't require thyroid hormone wow. to start with. So that is, imagine this is the most prescribed drug in the United States, the third most prescribed drug in the UK. And there is the potential of being overtreated with this, yeah but not really significant benefits. So what should patients do? If it's the most prescribed drug, do you just, the next time you have your follow-up with your general practitioner, do you just say, can we double check this? What should we be doing? So one of the things is, is to make sense of why you are taking this drug. So there might be patients that get some benefit. And in fact, uh, there might be true that even the blood uh, levels are normal. It, there is might be a threshold in which even though this, the, the levels are normal, the signal from the brain is telling you that it's likely to fail very soon. Hmm. So yes, some patients actually might benefit of this, but they are not the majority. So when you are a patient taking levothyroxine, it's important to go back and the reason why you started taking it. If the symptoms that were supposed to improve by that did not get any better, well, you are getting your answer already that perhaps the medicine is not for you. Hmm. And you might want to step down the medicine reassess in a few months and see what the levels are and see what the symptoms are. And the same works The same works when you are taking the medicine for the first time. Just makes sense that is the goal and it is a horizon when or how to stop it. So I always tell my patients, if we're gonna start this pathway, let's reconvene again in a few months. And if symptoms have not improved whatsoever, well, I think the answer is there. So the patients really that you're talking about without making it too complex, but expanding a little bit on what you've said is, you're talking about the patients who have a normal thyroid hormone level but have an elevated TSH, it's thyroid right. stimulating hormone. So the thyroid stimulating hormone being high would suggest that your body is telling your thyroid to produce more hormo hormone, but your blood test shows that it in fact is normal. So in, in you're saying that those patients don't really need to be treated. The majority of those patients, they don't. But again, there is a small group of patients in which the signal for the brain, the TSH value, is rising or going really um, above above 10 or 20, so very high numbers. It's telling you that it's very likely that that thyroid will fail very soon. But the majority of patients, they don't have that. They just have a slightly abnormal value. And to compound everything, it seems now that elderly people, people about 65, actually have normal high values of TSH. So the brain normally, as we age, sends a higher signal to the thyroid. All right, levothyroxine, the most commonly prescribed drug in the United States, and you may not need to be taking it. Thanks so much, endocrinologist, hormone doctor, Dr. Juan Burrito. Thanks no, thank so you. much. Thank you for having me.